Okay, you're live. Alright. Oh. Look at my hair. Kind of a little crazy. Um, hello. Yate, Shay, Richard, the Crane, and Chat. Um, Kirchini, Mushachin, Goggin, and Schle. Um, Ashin, the Shachay, Goggin, and the Sunala, Kote, Dene, and Schle. Um, hello, my name is Richard D. Crane. Um, you probably met me, might have met me before. He, um, anyway, where do we leave off? We, was last week, we passed two couple of meetings that we had. We, uh, talked about moccasins and making how to get the measurements to um, to get your your moccasin your foot measurements and stuff and so uh, we're continuing on with the moccasin um, my mom I just started someone just emailed I don't know if everybody probably just saw that too but I'm um, using my daughter's laptop um, sometimes when she texts her mom or text from her cell phone that's connected to her her laptop but uh, anyway how's everybody doing this week happy new year um, I know everybody was uh, home safe uh, doing things uh, to keep them safe at home taking care of each other and themselves by you know staying home and being safe and doing crafty things you know today we're gonna finish off or maybe two two part of our moccasin making series. Um, I said a lot of like, like I was saying I've said before. You know, I'm um, just showing you a real quick tutorial about how to make moccasins. Um, you can look online. Um, and different people have different different tribes, different techniques. Um, there's different styles of how to make uh, moccasins. Um, so I'm just going to show you kind of a, a general. How I learned how to make them. Um, um, these are we're just gonna make some really small um, baby moccasins today. Um, just working on learning how to do the edge beading, getting everything set up um, for making these smaller moccasins. I know I had a had someone ask if they wanted to, if they would show us how to do these smaller ones. And this is good, real good practice if you want to learn how to make real moccasins. Um, later on, and um, doing little kid ones are a lot of fun. They're just cute. Yep. So today we're going to be do that. Um, if you were have been following me, I kind of talk through how to um, make your moccasin, starting from you know measuring your foot, you know by standing up, getting whoever you're making the moccasin for by standing up, you know, measuring your foot with the on a piece of paper or cardboard works good and then you know the next step was trying to get the the top part of the moccasin where it covers covers the top part of your foot that measurement um, you can use a string to go around your sole um, I've also seen other people just use like a piece of paper or, or the cloth itself and actually put it over your foot or over the top of the foot of the person and do it that way if you know if that person is available to do that you can do it that way where you just take the measurements straight off the foot and and um, kind of mark it as you go um, and like I said you can go online and check that stuff out on YouTube there's a lot of tutorials on making moccasins and you know when I first started I didn't know how either I had looked up well before yeah, this is before mock for YouTube a um, no we had a uh, patterns you know I went to the store and found a pattern and I think we sell it over at Dancing Bear uh indian trader the pattern making set you know um i'll show you i, I, I found it i was in the storage and i was looking it's that old missouri river pattern of moccasins and you know this is kind of how i kind of learned and taught myself i bought this you know pattern and me and my wife kind of kind of took it upon ourselves to make you know moccasins for the first time um as you can see, you know, it comes with uh, these little paper pattern things that you can cut out. Um, just like, you know, the, the stuff you, if you go buy a uh, dressmaking pattern at Walmart or something like that. Um, this is uh, really handy, but at the same time, it's, uh, it's not quite, if you have wide feet. Um, can everybody hear me okay? I just got a notification that my mic was off. 
Oh, is it too sure? Mm-hmm. Test, test. Thomas, can you hear me? Yeah, it's working. Okay, I just had Thomas um, um, check the mic. Uh, everybody probably saw that. Said your mic wasn't working. I think that's the mic for um, the other camera that I turned off. <clears throat> that way we didn't get any feedback. But yeah, so this is the pattern. So what I did, you know, I was telling you that I actually got, you know, the pattern itself, and I cut it out and I uh, stuck it on a piece of uh, um, cardboard and you know kind of glued it on there. And you know, so I have these patterns for for a long time versus just having it in the paper form. So that's what you can do and it, it's pretty nice you know it's got measurements for the men and women and it's got this U thing that I kind of show you how to how to make and I think that's the hardest part that people have problems with is le- learning how to make the top of the moccasin or this U shape thing and you know the easiest way you know if you do use this pattern it's fine but if you have wide feet you know add add an inch or a quarter inch to whatever this pattern is and you'll get the the measurements yeah I know a lot of people, I used to take orders and do moccasins, and so I had these patterns already done. Here's the foot that I made, you know, it's a women. And it's really simple when you do this. You just basically, there's a dot there and a dot there, and it goes right there in the line. And then you, you have this pattern that you can cut out very, fairly, fairly easy, fairly simple. Um, that's the way I used to do it. Even comes with like a little tongue that cuts out. So I did that, you know, when I was first learning how to, to, to do moccasins. Or learning to make moccasins for myself and my daughter and my, my son and so I still have my pattern you know I kept this pattern the first pattern I ever made and it's just out of a paper sack and so I've kept that for a long time but I think some people once like I was saying you can use you can actually get this uh, piece of uh, any piece of paper and actually if you have the person that you're gonna measure actually put their foot down and then you can just put the paper on their foot and then you just um, mark the sections of, of their foot up to where their um, uh, the top of their their, their, their foot is at, um, where the opening would be. And so that's an easy way, a real uh, Indian secret way to do it. <laughs> you can use a, uh, a piece of cloth too if you want to do that. It's very simple, it's very easy. Um, or you can do the rope trick like I taught you and just add a, a about half inch to to, to, to the whole line and you come up with this U shape and this is actually my foot and you know, we kind of mark put dates on there and you know this is uh, my foot and my daughter's we get left you don't need when you make the, your, your tracing you only need left you know and right unless your foot are different sizes you can just use the same <laughs> one pattern I did that and this is uh, was my fortunate to me but this is probably my daughter's I made it out of a little bit of cardboard kind of a cardboard cut up um, and you can actually change this up a little bit. Some people will cut it back a little bit or from this angle instead of cutting it straight with a scissor. And you can actually, the trick to do it is just fold that in half and you'll get down the middle and you, you cut the middle. And then some people will cut it at an angle so you'll have a, 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 a more of an angle. Because I cut here and here to make it a little tighter on my daughter's foot. Um, you can cut at this angle too, works too. Or you can cut it this way. Um, either way will work just to make it a little tighter. Um, that's the real real deal making moccasins. Um, just a real quick overview or, or a run through real quick. And like I said, you could look stuff up online and watch how people do it because people do it differently. Really good, really good. Um, some people have really good techniques. It's best to learn from a lot of different people to learn how to do it. Um, so you get bits of information and it, and it helps a lot, you know, once you get get serious and want to make moccasins like for me I made moccasins be- because I wear them every weekend or I used to wear them every weekend when there was powwows every weekend you know I would have to make moccasins uh, I have to restore the ones I I'd go through because I go through the soul when I dance you know dancing in different places in different areas um, we could, we've always run run to the fact that we put our soul in so what let's get into uh, making these uh, little moccasins so we're just gonna do these really tiny one so I got some scrap um, buckskin and the buckskin you can use this is for a child you don't you don't have to put use anything that's hard like I said you could use the latigo when you get older an older adult you can use that what's called latigo um, and do that for the sole so that it, it'll last longer and it'll you know work a lot better but for a little little babies little kids you can just use um, some real thick I use a little bit of a, a thicker side of uh, uh, buckskin 
Um, I think this is a German tan um, deer. There's a different type of uh, um, deer that you can get. German tan deer, um, regular regular tan, uh, white tan, a um, smoke tan, uh, a smoke hide um, is really good to use. But today we're just going to use a real quick um, a white buckskin. And so I've already cut out one little foot and you know it's really simple it's good to have good scissors i have some really good um, sharp scissors um, that can cut through leather fairly easy fairly simple um, and so uh, or you can use like i said have also have the roller um, if you want to get real quick and real fast you know break out the little uh, pizza roller uh, these things are really sharp and really dangerous and you can cut yourself pretty easy uh, trust me i've done it and it just slices through there but it takes a little bit of skill uh, not to cut yourself <laughs> um, that's why some people prefer to use the scissor method and you know that's just fine you know sometimes I'll use both I'll use a little for the straight edges I'll use that and then for the rest of it I'll cut with this uh, scissor because if you have a really good scissor nice and sharp and these are to cut like leather type scissor these are not used to cut anything else but um, leather when I, when I do um, work to do that so hopefully everybody can see this okay so I'm just making the little baby pattern I think one thing to note is that at the end is kind of usually I'll leave a quarter to a half inch at the end um, of the the heel uh, just in case I need to make it a little a bigger or a little wider and so usually I'll leave a, a little piece like that and so you know we got the matching foot left and right and so you know put that to the side next you know we got to do the uh, top moccasins like I said if you can if you have the, the baby or the person there with you you can just measure but it's fairly simple to to get the top of the pattern um, you actually have to draw a line from there to there from from the toe from probably like the third toe over I'll show you on this foot um, on this foot pattern when you see that pretend this is this one uh, it's a little chubbier and a little wider because <laughs> most babies have really wide feet when they're born and real small um, you kind of go offset it this, this this dot a little bit to the side so it's a little bit offset it's not too offset like I said babies have really wide feet a uh, little toe will probably fit here um, but you kind of make it a little off the side and then um, you can use a pencil it's best to use a pencil if you're using um, let's see let's make sure I have enough room for both so um, so what I do is just uh, I basically put that there and start here and I kind of go that's the tip of it and then I go um, just on the outside of it and then just go until I get to about this is say this is the top of your uh, foot usually I'll put a mark there and that's where I'll start and then I'll just go straight down just straight down from there um, usually you can use a, a better uh, I don't really use like a, a pencil well, I use a pencil I mean I don't use a marker or anything you can measure this and some people will measure from here to here and get that usually about seven and a half uh, inches from here to here works for like a woman's foot and a little wider for men's probably like uh, nine inches um, and so you know I got this little pattern and so from there you have this this u-shape I was talking about and so you can kind of go up and kind of fix it a little bit once you get the, the pattern off but you want to kind of make kind of a little bit of a u-shape one like this and just go straight out and you know like I said when you have this on here um, you can go at least I'll go about half inch um, let's move a little closer uh, half inch to a quarter make it a little wider because this is at the end when it closes at the heel at the back of the the ankle um, this will close up um, so this is kind of what you'll see um, the pattern with the foot pattern in, in it and so um, usually this is uh, it probably comes comes out a little wider um, than this if you on a normal foot that's about probably like two inches a little wider compared to this little baby moccasin and you know if you're unsure if you want to make it a little bigger it's fine to make it a little looser you can go a little bit bigger for uh, a baby moccasin that way you know like you know the, some some Indian mostly Indian babies are really chubby anyway so you might as well add a whole um, quarter inch to this to this thing for those chubby Indian <laughs> Indian feet I know I had little chubby Indian feet when I was when I was little 
and these only fit for uh, when I was first born and after that I got chubby uh, my mom's breast milk <laughs> all natural but yeah so you'll create that that little horseshoe and you can just do one side because what you can do is flip it um, some people will actually you know when they make this pattern um, they'll make it a little more pointy kind of like uh, kind of like that to give it a little bit a little bit of a pointy but sometimes people make it too pointy on one side or in the middle uh, it's all up to your discretion um, if you want to just make it round that's fine and like I said you can use your scissors or you can use the roller and this is going to be the top pattern um, of the moccasin and you just go whoop. Um, like I said I'm pretty I'm pretty pro at this and um, what did I I didn't talk about the hide as much um, so there's two sides of uh, the the deer skin uh, or the buckskin or whatever type of skin you're using there's this uh, there's a soft side usually that's where the fur is at and then the other side is the the kind of a coarse coarser side that's where the the skin side is on the, the inner side and so usually when I bead um, I'll bead on the outside where it's the softer skin on the on the outside the hair side some people refer it to um, so that's the side that you want to kind of bead on and like I said you can using the scissors is a little easier than using um, the uh, maybe a little safer but some people think that's easier I think it's I think that's easier I would have done it um, straight with the, the rotary color rotary cutter and then once you have this um, see this is the top that we marked flip it over so you can get the the left side or the opposite side that you want and so you know it's a little less work and then you can just mark this off again kinda how you do sometimes it won't pencil you know it has a hard time sometimes you just kinda hit it hit it kinda find a few areas to to mark it and then you can that you can kinda see then you can kinda darken it in a little bit and make it a little bit darker and so there you go you have the the uh, right side and you know fairly simple and this one I'll do with the rotary cutter uh, just to show you just to show you how quick this can be um, and don't be scared to turn your your stuff around to work with you um, you don't want to be cutting uh, safety don't ever cut towards you uh, I remember I was teaching the class and this young lady uh, kind of cut this cut towards her and she cut her finger like we just barely started the class and so we had to stop and uh, call 911 now we just uh, got got her fixed up got her band-aid and everything and she was supposed to be the safety person but actually um, actually that person was actually late for the class she didn't stay um, for the little safety lecture like I always I always talk I always um, when I teach this class in person especially to young kids I'll give a, a safety because our kids you know we get scared that our kids can't handle things like sharp objects and you know the, the best thing is to believe in them and to to teach them to show them um, to tell them the safety procedures of using a rotary knife you know never cut towards yourself um, never cut towards like if your hands over here you don't want to cut towards your hand uh, it's closed right now so don't worry about my hand you don't want to cut towards you're always up cutting away from yourself you know if your hands over here you're cutting away not going towards your hand you're cutting away from your hand or you're cutting away from your body to keep yourself safe and same thing goes for using the awl um, I think um, uh, later on we might be using the awl same thing it's a sharp sharp object you know you want to point it always poke away from yourself if you use the scissors make sure your fingers are not in the way um, you know even the needles don't share needles you know sometimes I know me when I when I beat it I always tend to somehow poke myself and then there's a little bit of blood and you don't want to be sharing needles with somebody and so that's I usually go through that safety safety first <laughs> even in just real simple mocks and making class you know we, you know, we just want to think safety um, especially if we're teaching kids um, things like this and using um, items sharp items you know knives and stuff so I'll let everybody catch up yeah. I don't know who's watching probably them probably everybody's watching so I gotta let everybody catch up so um, now you, know, you got your tea 
or your little not your tea you got to make your tea now um, some people like I said you can you can make it a tea or you can make a, a little bit different um, you can actually if you have if you're still doing the paper kind of thing you can fold this in half boom and that will give you the middle of your moxton oh I'm not even on camera well let's do that again so I've got here got this um, what you do to find the middle of this line you just fold it in half boom and then it's going to be a little bit um, wonky on one side like here it's not going to really ma match up because you know that's how we cut it a little bit but the back side is the, the important part you just want to make sure that's nice and lined up and straight and you can uh, either mark that or you can just straight cut it if you know where the top of your um, the opening is going to be for your your mucks and you can actually you know just mark that really quick like that and then you got this all lined up um, you just go right down the middle and some people you know will get scared and not do it this way you know I've been doing it for for quite some time so it's fairly um, I'm not I'm not scared hey and then you cut the little T and then you have the little T pattern um, and it's and like I said um, some people if they want to um, make the top where you know the laces are um, they'll cut at an angle this part I'll cut this at an angle to make it a little tighter fit around the ankle um, once you put this lace in into it um, and that's you know that's um, preference to whatever you want it, whoever if you want it that way and you just wanna so that's pretty good I can cut it a little um, a little wider than that just a little and so you got your little T here so you can do that the same thing to this one uh, same process put it in the middle um, if you want you can line this up just to make sure you got it at the same place as the other one just mark it there <coughs> like I said I'm gonna do this really quick and so you know you get your top of your mocks and set and clip and right now I'm not too worried um, when you it's best to practice if you're going to do this for yourself, you know, if you're going to do this, because you don't want to waste um, really good buckskin, you know, by cutting it wrong. Um, it's best to practice on fabric first and get it, get it right. Get your, your foot right um, to where it needs to be. And then I said, like, um, having a really good pair of scissors works really good. Um, usually uh, when people get hurt, it's usually having dull dull um dull tools dull scissors or dull rotary cutters then you get hurt because you're pressing harder you're putting more pressure and that's when people will cut their finger or poke themselves so it's best to have a sharp um, honed um, scissors or a honed um, rotary rotary cutter and so you know there we go we have the, the two patterns here and so you know I kind of already kind of got ahead of ahead of schedule <laughs> um, so this is um, I when I when I when I do beadwork I'll um, do an, a line because this is where I'm gonna be the outside is where I'm gonna be um, doing the whip stitch you know I know last week I talked about the whip stitch this is gonna go uh, on the inside of the mox and you won't see this part but you want to go um, about a half inch or a quarter inch out from where every pattern if you look on the Mrs. Moxon you see it's not to the edge here it's about probably about a half inch to about a quarter on the outside when you talk about the beadwork and so you can make a beadwork line um, some people will use a, a ruler if you have a ruler you can use that so you, you know if you want to stay stay a little straight and, and some people will draw their the pattern out and today we're going to do uh, a lazy stitch so I'm going to kind of draw kind of where I want to draw the the pattern and you know some people will draw the whole pattern out um, and then put it on here and draw all out and they'll even do colors and everything and get all expert on it um, but you really don't have to you just kind of have a, a line um, and to start just to kind of show you where the the beading is going to be and we're going to do a, a lazy stitch style beadwork um, 
this is going to be extra lazy because we're actually just going to go straight through the um, the moccasin. And so I make sure, like I said, uh, to tell the differences on the inside or the outside is the the, the smoother part is where the um, is where the hair is at, or where where the hair was at of the deer. Like I said, in, in pencil is best if you try to use a pin. The pin will um, actually really bleed, and you don't want that to bleed on your nice white. Um, buckskin because that will not be good at all um, and so and so yeah it's, so it's fairly easy and like, like I was telling you when we do the beading it's fairly simple fairly easy to do uh, the beading we'll just go around um, and bead so As far as beading, um, you can use um, whatever size, like a size 11. I know these uh, on this moccasin are size 11 size bead. Um, and if you have extra um, material, you can use these for the laces. Uh, just cut a roll thin quarter inch size and use that as the laces. Put those here. And so now let's get into to beating these the top of the moccasins and put these to the side. Um, and so um, beads, you know, like in general, um, is the the normal. M most people use size 11 beading beading needle and also size 11 um, beads, and the the number is actually the 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 hole that's the the middle of the bead that's how you tell what the the size bead is size 11 and usually the higher the number the the, the smaller the hole um, yeah and for these y'all i was telling you that you for the for sewing like i said you can just use a regular beading uh needle which is kind of the longer ones or you can use a sharp um, a sharp needle which is a little smaller and I like to use those sharps because they're a little uh, a little stronger than these these long ones I tend to to bend these <laughs> when I use the needles and and you know like I said um, what I use is Nymo um, a synthetic string um, that's good some people use what's called fire line it's a more synthetic string that you don't have to wax but usually when I when I when I when I put this uh, when I thread this I'll thread it to um, I'll thread it and then I I will cut or tie it on one end and so you know when I thread it I tie it on the end so I, I double it up um, I like to do it that way I don't know a lot of people will tend to not do that um, but I like to double it up this is uh, and as far as the the size of the string this is size B you can get a B C and um, an O size which is really thin and the A is a little thicker so B is a little thinner wait or D is a little um, a little thicker and A is a little thinner and B is pretty thin um, are you talking yes your mic is off click off I think it's my mic is good it keeps saying it to me anyway let's get into this so you know when I when I start to bead um, I always like to start um, if you do a normal lazy stitch you um, normal lazy stitch you don't go through the material you basically um, stay on the edge um, and they just prick the edge to start um, up at a point. Oh. And you never go through the bot or through the whole thing. Um, but it, if you want, you can. If your material is pretty thin, like uh, if I was using a thicker material, it'll be it. It would have been a lot easier to do that style where you just prick 
the um, the skin or the leather and you just go through halfway of it and then come back up and that's where you would start but since this is a little thinner I'm gonna go from start from the bottom and just go straight through because this is actually really really thin right here um, and you know maybe when it, it's kind of thin on one section you all when you pick your leather because one side of this is I just noticed that this is really thin here and it's really th kind of thicker over here so maybe I'll start it with just um, going straight through and beating it um, and so what you do is you start from the bottom this is the bottom this is the top and you pull it through and just like doing a regular beading or applique beading you know you have a little knot at the end you can actually burn this and it'll melt and then you can give it a tap and it'll be like a little thing there and it's good and then kind of pull on it a little bit like I was saying I, I like to to wax oops hmm I usually have my wax on here but it seems to be missing I use uh, some beeswax I like to hit it with a a bit of beeswax before I um oh there it is it's like where'd you go I like to hit the string with a little beeswax this just prevents fraying and you know makes a little bit of water fight against water <clears throat> make a little waterproof because you know little chubby feet will actually sweat a little bit <laughs> and you want that fraying and this you know just helps it from fraying helps it from from you know getting too moist and rotting fast and so to the side so you know the let's see kind of I've got a couple of different colors of beads um, that we can do I'll kind of push the thing so you can see um, if you heard some of my talks about beadwork and beading um, I did do a, a few and you know I buy beads in paint um, you can buy them in grams or you can buy a hank is just you know like uh, 12 strands of beads put together and they weigh a certain amount and <clears throat> so that's uh, considered a, a hank um, I'm not sure exactly how, how much they weigh or whatever um, but yeah so I'm gonna use some Charlotte's here these are some 11 cut Charlotte beads I really like this maroon <clears throat> put this away and we'll use uh, I'm gonna put the pattern. So what you want to do when you think of a pattern, um, these are like this is kind of what people call like the mountain pattern. See how it kind of goes up and down. And you want to think about a background color. Uh, the background color here, um, as you can kind of tell, is the blue, and the pattern color is the the kind of it's a fire. People call this the fire kind of color when it's a red, uh, red, orange, and yellow. Um, so it's kind of the fire color pattern of the mountain kind of because this is you know kind of where I'm from the mountain um, the mountain area of Montana this is called prior Montana and so they this is why they made it this color the orange is part of my the ties the bundle uh, clan color is orange and also like a really bright pink um, and like a maroon is like our kind of a sacred kind of color so you can figure out your pattern and a good place to start when you, um, like I said, it's kind of on the tip of the toe. And when you bead, you want to bead out this way and then bead out the other way. All right, and I gotta oh, just move things around because sometimes if I don't move things around, the uh, the camera will go off. It thinks I'm not working. Can you still see the camera over there, Thomas? Oi, 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 oi! Because it just went off over here. And went to sleep. Wiki wiki. And so you know, I'll just keep on talking. So I'm gonna set up my beads here. Huh? I just stopped. Oh yeah, the bead. Uh, I think uh, something's getting hot here. Sometimes when this computer or my phone gets hot, it'll turn off on its own. I will get that back on. I got my IT guy on Thomas on it. 
time to take a little break. Yeah. Mm. So beading is fairly simple. Um, so I've got my beads set up. Um, you want to come over here and touch on the computer? Turn this up real quick. Oh, no, full screen. What is it? Can you see me okay? Yeah, so what I was saying, I was saying this is 11 cut um, Charlotte beads. I'm gonna use um, usually um, if you get the count on on these beads we can go by this um, usually it's like seven or eight is like the the count on the bead um, trying to find the camera here where are you at camera there you are and so you can use your this is what this comes in for it's fine it's, it's plugged in or is it dying it's dead hmm. it's a little weird um, yeah so my phone kind of died <laughs> should have plugged in and so we can get the count of the beads um, on this. I'll count it real quick. One, two, three, four, five. So five. One, two, three, four, five. So five beads. I'm just going to show you. Five beads from one this side to here. This going this way is five beads, five beads, five beads all around. So that's the pattern. When you, when you think about making your pattern, you want to think about um, the beads and which way they... they um, they go and they orientate, or orientate, and you know it's best to um, if you want to do a pattern um, on one side and make it even. It's best to start in the middle of the pattern. So when I if I wanted to actually maybe we should do that. Um, so thinking about um, if you have a pattern set, you want to start in the middle of your pattern. So on the top of the mountain to the bottom is the center. So you want to figure out what the colors are. That way, when you do that, you can do the pattern will mirror mirror itself. When you go one way, and then you go the other way, you'll mirror the beads that you use. And we're using five five sets of beads, so the color on this, um, I'm gonna try to kind of match. Oh, okay, we're back. Yay! Thank you, Thomas. Just needed to plug my phone in. Um, and so the color scheme on this is um, blue, orange. Or blue, yellow, orange, red, and then a maroon. So, like I said, it's the fire, fire color. So, uh, luckily, I think I believe have some fire color beads. So, just preparing your beads. You know, I got the maroon. Um, I got the dark blue. I don't know if I want to use this. I'll use the pretty baby blue. A lot of people like that. That up. This will be my background color, the baby blue. Um, and I've got the red, I've got the orange, and let's put it right here. And I've got the yellow. And so, so just thinking about your pattern, um, like I said, from uh, you want to, you have a pattern like the mountain pattern. You want to start in the middle, so you can mirror it one way and mirror it the other way. And so a lot of people like this uh, mountain pattern, so that um, I've done it many times before. So that's how I kind of know um, and know how to do it. So the best way is to, and you'll um, like it, like I was saying, if you paid attention last week when um, doing the whip stitch, when you um, attach the the moccasins to the sole um, you do whip stitch and you start at the middle of the moccasin and go one way f f for the first round and then go the opposite direction and so like I said just like the middle of this pattern you start in the middle and go one way and then go the other way so I'm just kind of set up and usually when I, I, I like to bead I don't um, really pour my beads out in and a lot of people it just depends on your preference if you want to pour your beads into um, a little piece or if that's how you bought it it's not in hanks it's in um, tubes or something like that that's fine and you create a little a little beading mound or whatever 
and that's f just fine. Uh, so what's the pattern? So it starts off. So the background, the blue is my background. Um, like I said, and then the pattern is these these colors, the fire colors. Um, let's see, find the end here. So uh, I like to use, and then I tie off my, my beads when I get them. I'll tie just one single bead in a knot around a bead, and then that you know keeps it from falling off the string. And that's how I work with a hank of beads. And so, you know, what was the pattern? Um, so, from the bottom, in the bottom, it'll it'll start with a maroon. So just think, kind of the fire colors, maroon, like for different people, different tribes. You know, there's a significance of the colors that we use. You know, maroon is kind of a protection, kind of color for for me and my clan. And so is the color orange and the colors that we 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 we. Um, the clans that we come from um, are sacred to us, and so you know, <clears throat> I, I, you know, some of the there's a lot more meaning um, for different tribes. You know, different colors have different meanings. Even like using black, you know, you wouldn't use black on a lot of things um, except for like if you're like maybe a veteran. You know, that, that some tribes say that's the only people that can use black. Mm, other people, you know, won't use black because it's I don't know a taboo of some sort. But yeah, it just depends on your tribe. And so, you know, just sticking with like fire colors is, is really um, the way to go. And so thinking about fire colors, so I would do a red next. So all we're doing is picking up beads, the red, I already got the maroon, I pushed it down. Uh, the red, the orange is next. And, you know, beading these, you know, takes time takes patience um, and like I said you know as native people we've always done things like this creative craft works that you know are time-consuming and you know are healing to our, our souls um, when we when we do them you know, like I said if you're making this for a young kid a young child you know, maybe it's good it's a good idea to smudge it's always a good idea to smudge you know I, I have sweet grass that I use you know just to start to say a little prayer to give thanks to the creator for the things that he's given me you know and, and help me guide me as I make these young little moccasins and you know that clean, cleansing of oneself self-care is, is very important as Indian people we've always known that that's why we have these types of medicines you know sage around here the Kumeyaay people use um, the, the coastal sage you know we have sage up in where I'm from it's a little different a little thinner uh, prairie shades or we also use um, you know the sweet grass um, we use pine we also use um, the cedar um, so if you need that you know do that and it's always just good good medicine to do that for yourself um, to help you um, to self care for yourself because you know this in itself you know like we're saying we're doing this you know to help us stay home stay safe and you know stay occupied and not do um, things that are not good for us, you know, like just watching TV or being on the internet a little too much um, is very hurtful and harmful to one's being, one's soul, one's self. And so, you know, to keep ourselves busy, we can do things like this. This project is real simple. It's a, it's a way to practice if you want to end up making bigger moccasins for adult size for yourself. Uh, doing these little kid moccasins is a really good way to just to practice and so you know when we have our beads here um, all we're gonna do is go basically in and out and come up come up and you don't wanna cuz I don't know if you can kinda see that I kinda pulled a little too hard I was pulling too hard that's a little too hard so what you wanna do is just do it where it lays um, just kinda lay it down push it down and, and so the pattern that we're doing is the maroon uh, red, orange, yellow, and the light blue, and I have to take my glasses off because I can't see. Um, you can use your finger, you can use your thumb. Um, you just basically go right down where, right down where the bead is at. And like I said, you don't want to make it too, too, um, 
too tight um, you want to keep that same tension and just put it where string it where the beads lay or lay it where the strings lay just to keep it you know you don't want it too tight you don't want it too loose you want it just right and so you basically go through the whole um, and this might be difficult for some people if you have like a um, like I said before if you have a pair of good uh, needle nose pliers pliers that, that can help you pull it through and like I said you don't you know and then when you put it through you don't pull it pull it because you don't want the beads to sit um, sit sit up you want them to lay lay down lay them straight and so you know that's your pattern that's the begin that's the middle of your pattern and then from there where you went down or came up you want to come up right next to where you went down see um right there I'll get close I'll get close to the camera I came out right here I want to come back up just a little bit over and right next to the bead that that's on top and so you know this might take a little bit of practice um, and you want to just kind of uh, I can for me I can just eyeball it um, for people that are still learning how to bead it may take a little bit and so like, and you just want to come over uh, where the, 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 the other bead is coming out you want to come over just to the side like right here where you're kind of with the string this is the finger is my string and it's going but you know, it looks kind of weird but uh, you want to come up right next because see this is a bead and this is a bead and you want to come up just far far enough over but just enough to have the bead or have a rollover and you just pull it through and that's all we're doing today you know we're not gonna like I said you can do the and this is called a lazy stitch because you're not gonna um, tack down any beads you're just gonna just keep going um, across and like I said and as you go along when you're beating on this uh, at, a, at, a, at, a, at an angle um, your outside bead will kind of go a little wider and this wide this inside bead will be a little it'll stay a little tighter and the outside will go a little wider because you're going in a, in a, in a kind of a, a u-shape a, a, a circle kind of pattern so the outer outer row is going to be a little bit wider um, I can kind of if you look at this mox in here you can see there's a, a, a bit of a gap in between the outside of the pattern see and then the inside is a little tighter and so that kind of just compensates for the 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 oval <coughs> the oval the u-shape that you're going to go around so keep that in mind as you're um doing your beadwork so i'm gonna go just a little out on the outside but on the top it's going to be a little tighter and you do the reverse uh pattern and so because you're going to making these mountains so we're going to go two two blue beads And then you go with the yellow again. And you're going to reverse all the colors that you just picked up. Yellow, um, orange, red, and even just picking up the needles or picking up the beads, uh, you develop your own kind of technique. Um, and so you want to also count. Um, so keep it count so that we're only going five. So we're pick, we cut, picked up two blue beads, um, a yellow, orange, and a red. And that's going to be the entire little pattern. And so you'll, like I said, you'll go just to the outside or to the edge. Um, I'll kind of move this camera a little bit closer, hopefully. Does that help a little bit? Let me adjust it. And so when you go down on this, you want to be a little bit, like not too wide, like that wide. You want to just be like just a little bit wide. That's what I say, just to compensate for um, the curvature of the, the the shoe. And so, you know, like I said, when you're just learning how to do this, you can just put it straight down um, and hold it right there. And you kind of just push it just a little bit. And the easiest way, just when you're first learning how to do to bead is just to go right next to it and go 
straight down like kind of get where you want the needle and go straight down and push it through and like I said sometimes it's easy to push it through and sometimes you'll you'll need a a needle nose pliers to pull it through and and it's kind of thicker as I go this way so I'm thinking about doing it kind of uh, legit lazy stitch style but this is a la uh, lazy stitch where you go through a lazy stitch um, usually you'll just prick um, the skin or the buckskin and, and go to the next row over I'll show that because it's kind of thicker over here and you can see it's a little thinner over here and we just keep going do the same pattern um, but now you know like I said you're at the outer edge and when you're at outer edge you want to kind of be over a little bit versus being tied against the other bead and so and this like I said it takes practice you have a line there you can kind of gauge it and you know you have that line there but you know just it's just a, a guide it's not you don't have to always be exactly on that line um, the thing about these beads the seed beads um, is they're different sizes some of them are a little bit chubby and some of them are a little bit thinner um, it just depends on where you, you buy your beads or where you, what kind of beads you're using um, these Charlotte um, if you use Charlotte's they're, they're, they're actually pretty um, uniform in, in size and like I said you'll have some chubby beads and you'll have some really skinny beads and that's you know you want that because you know sometimes you'll have a pattern or, or design that you know that you need a, a fat bead and, and make sure you don't pull too hard I just kind of pulled a little too hard now you know this one looks wonky you want to kind of if you can you can pull this back and you know <clears throat> and make it just a little snug you don't want it too tight you want it just snug and then we're going to continue on our pattern real quick uh, the next on our pattern because we're kind of going down the mountain uh, or we're going back up the mountain we'll say <laughs> um, we're not going to use the red this time because we're, we're down a little further we're going to use um, orange orange yellow we're And then uh, three blue, which will give us five. And so orange, yellow, and blue. And like I said, the blue is the the base color or the background. You know, some people refer to it as the background. That's what I, I like refer to to the background, the base. And like I said, you just kind of push it kind of beat it where it lies and like I said this um, when you get to the inner inner row you want it to be a little tighter tighter and then the outer row is a little a wider out the bead as far as uh, setting it and so do the same thing and like I said um, this line is just a guide it's not it's not you know where you actually have to have to have to put the bead or put the string through it's just a guide And it's, it's fine if you're just a little above it or a little below it. Um, and that's why we kind of use pencil too. And pencil will actually, you know, kind of rub off on its own. Or if you use chalk, chalk will kind of rub off on its own and, and then it'll go away and you won't even notice. Um, and so there you go. Like I said, don't pull too hard. Uh, and we got our pattern going. And, and like I said, if you um, end up making it a little too tight like I just did there or a little too outside you can if you're a perfectionist you can pull it out uh, some people don't like to do that don't like to pull it out they'll just keep on going but today I'll just kind of show you I'll be a perfectionist today and pull it out and because I, I was I was a little over too far over I want it to be a little closer a little tighter um, so what I do is I'll uh, get the string on one side. I'll pull the string on one side and get the needle on one side and kind of do this back and forth action where I kind of open the hole just a little bit wider and then once it gets 
just a little bit wider you can pull it through but you kind of have to go back and forth a little bit and then it, it'll come through and then you kind of have a hole there and so you know like a kid perfectionist if you want to be a perfectionist you um, like I said that's a little too wide so I want to be a little closer And using the beading needles is a little harder because they're a little longer. If you use the the smaller, sharp size 11 needles, um, those work a lot better. Especially with someone like me, I have really chubby, chubby hands, <laughs> chubby sausages. Um, and so um, that's the pattern that you're going to keep on doing. If you want, uh, I think um, this is probably. What time is it, Thomas? Do I have any questions? No, no questions so far. All right. Just um, Victoria getting Happy New Year. Yay, Happy New Year. Yes, it's a Happy uh, it's New Year. Five oh, three. Yeah. oh, wow. So we went over our time a lot, uh, over a bit. I think we started late, so which is fine. And then you want to continue on the, the pattern all the, way, all the way down until you get to the end. Um, you can stop. Um, maybe about a quarter inch to the end if you want that way you give a little bit of room to to do the whip stitch I think next week uh, when we come back we'll see how far everybody is um, you'll just continue the pattern on one side or just continue one side of the mountain and then stop and then go on the other side so you can see the pattern if you if you want to do that if you don't um, just continue on with this, the same pattern uh, the next, like I said, it's going to be kind of descending or ascending. Um, the next color, once you got to come up again, this time we're going to have the color I can tell you right now is going to be four, um, four blue, um, a yellow, and an orange. Wait, no, four blue and one yellow, which is five. Come on, Richard, do your math. Um, it's going to be the next uh, pattern. And like I said, it takes a um, um, it takes practice when you're doing this this beading on this uh, material. This material is a little hard um, to to penetrate with uh, some needles too, and you don't want to poke yourself. And like I said, um, you don't want to make the tension on the string super tight um, you want to keep it um, loose um, not too loose but I guess just snug um, when you pull it through and if you need to you know like I said after a while um, you'll you'll kind of feel the string um, you'll you'll know when you need to add uh, more wax if if you if you're able to add wax that's good if, you, if you're not that's fine too um, but like when I when I start to feel this um, the string get a little um, kind of dry, I, I'll rewax it. And you don't want to do too much wax. Usually I'll just do like two, one or two um, times. And so yeah, so that's the the kind of the pattern. Uh, like I said, this will be the end of the pattern. Um, which will, will it'll end with four blue and one yellow which will be the bottom of the the mountain um, and then you um, if you look at the the pattern on my my baby moccasin um, it goes to the background pattern which is all blue so the next after this row here the next one over will be all blue um, it looks like two rows of all blue. Um, hold on, where's the camera? I'm trying to find the camera. Uh oh, it's falling asleep again. Wake it up. I think it's awake. But anyway, yeah, I'll, I'll show you on this camera. So it's going to be two blue of the background over. So that yellow is at the one we're at right now. And the two rows over will be blue and blue, and then you'll start the bottom of the mountain and you'll go up the pattern. That's the, the pattern that you're going to be doing 
And like I said, if you're doing a pattern, you want to start from the middle and then work one way and then work the other way. But now that we have this pattern, we're going to go all the way to the left side and then keep on going from there. Yep. So, all right, guys, that's the end for me. We'll uh, see you guys next week. Uh, check out this uh, my tutorial. Um, like I said, you can go online and check other people's, other people's tutorial. Um, maybe some people, maybe I didn't explain it very good or, or you didn't get how I explained it. Um, check them out. You know, it's good to have different sources of information to kind of get the same thing. And, and that way we all learn and that way we all have something to do. Um, to stay safe at home. Um, this is a, a project that I'm, I'm just doing. I'm going to be reading my own uh, personal moccasins soon. I just wanted to, to practice up because it's been about almost a year since I've beaded moccasins. This was a chance and opportunity for to kind of hold my skills again and, and bring it back so I can learn and, and show you guys also and share a little bit of, of my knowledge that I've, I've come upon. Like I said, some of this knowledge came from a book, <coughs> that pattern book, and also you know came from talking to people, talking to, to my, my elders, talking to my, my relatives. And here's the pattern. And, th and in this book or in this pattern set, you'll, it'll, it'll show you some moccasins that are fully fully beaded um there's other styles of uh, different styles of moccasins on this thing and, and it, it talks you gives you a list and everything this thing's it's, it's pretty neat um like i said this pattern is good if you have a, a thin normal foot for but for most of us indians we have wide feet <laughs> so I'm, um, add a half inch to a quarter inch to whatever the foot size is on these or just use your own foot um so you guys have a good day you know hopefully everybody's having a good good new year so far um coming up i know i'm counting down to my birthdays this month i'm counting down to that i'm gonna um have some barbecue uh you like to go to lucille's barbecue hey if you guys want to start sending me some stuff that's good my birthday's coming up but anyway you guys have a good day um this is richard Ducrane, working here with the youth center um sandy mary San Diego American Indian Health and Circles of Care. So you guys take care. We'll, we'll talk to you guys. Smudge, don't judge. Uh, have a good day. Uh,